Hey everybody, welcome back and if you're new, welcome. I'm Kathy Arbor and today we're going to be doing some cute little raccoons all huddled up in a hollow of a tree, all snuggled for winter. Um, sorry I'm late, another YouTube glitch. <laughs> um, if you're with me on Tuesday, we did a really cute little fox. I'm into nature right now for some reason. This is the little fox we did last on Tuesday with watercolor pen and a little bit of um, colored pencil. Hey, Candy, hi, how are y'all? Thanks, thanks for coming in. Hope you're doing well. Hey Dot. She spins. Great. So there is a uh, traceable for this guy in a reference photo. Um, and I believe this one is in the description below the uh, video. You can check that out. We did this last, the week before. And there's a traceable for that one, too. And what did we do last Thursday? I think we did some... Oh, yeah, we figured out journaling. That was it. So this is the little guys <laughs> we're doing today. So three little... It's probably a family. They don't normally um, snuggle together when they're adults. They're kind of vicious when they're adults, actually. So we're going to do this one, and I've given you a traceable, and it's for all members, um, all levels, and you can find that in the community page here on YouTube, or I just uh, uploaded it to the Patreon. <laughs> yeah, you want to kiss them until they rip your face off. <laughs> Hey Janet, how are you? <laughs> hey, hey Dar. Devin. Good to see you. These guys are cute. So what I was thinking, been racking my brain. I just want to get back into the mixed media aspect of things too. Uh, not all the time, but I found this paper, so what I did is I put it through my um, printer and just printed over top of it. Because I thought, oh, this looks like tree bark. We'll work with it. So, that should work. It's a little, oh, that's the wrong one. I reversed them. I don't know. I just liked it better the other way around. Where did they put that other one? Oh, here it is. So, I hope you guys will paint along with me. Um, you can do this on any kind of uh, mixed media paper or watercolor paper, canvas, uh, chipboard would work, cardboard would work. Use what you have. That's the way I go. So I just cut the paper down to the size so it fit into my printer and I just printed it out. I did it on um, a uh, laser print instead of a regular jet because I don't want it to smudge or anything. Hey Jilly! And uh, you probably it's probably a little hard for you guys to see. I'll bring you in though um, when I start painting. So I'm going to be working with uh, craft paint. I like using craft paint especially when you're just starting out or you're just playing it's inexpensive and 
it doesn't stick to your pages. If you're going to be putting this in a journal or slamming it up against each other, maybe you got a whole bunch of them, they're sitting in a folder or whatever, they're not going to stick to each other if you use um, craft paint. Uh, we need a pet raccoon when I... We, oh, you had a pet raccoon? <laughs> yeah, I know a lot of people. Um, I'm right, even around here, I knew some people that had them. My brother also had an alligator in his bait. What? <laughs> Are you kidding me? Really? That's just crazy. <laughs> Sorry, but it is. <laughs> Oh my gosh. <laughs> so, I've been uh, kind of studying this, and this is how I like to start when I'm going to be doing any kind of painting or drawing, whatever. I like to sit down, study the photograph or whatever it is that I'm um, referencing off of, and think up things that I could use or colors that I need or maybe I want to redo something on here and only use bits and pieces of it. These are the things you'll um, look at first before you start uh, painting it. Now this one's got a little bit of uh, pinky color. There's some, looks like moss or some kind of... Uh, not sure what it is in there along here. Uh, a little bit of a greenish tone to it, to the bark. Uh, bark can be all kinds of colors, even, even a bit of blue, mauve. Uh, so that's why I kind of like this one here. Now, the other thing that I was contemplating on is I would like a stencil for bark. I looked high and low. I have nothing in my collection. I have a big collection of stencils. There's nothing there. Um, so if there's P&M <laughs> Studios, <laughs> I know they make stencils. That would be a really cool stencil to have. <laughs> I've got lots of uh, crackle, but it's not uh, its not the same. Crackle isn't the same as a um, tree bark. Gary was the kid that had to drag everything home. He had ferrets too, oh my gosh. Well, yeah, I wouldn't be a fan either, oh my goodness. <laughs> Hey, honey, go feed my alligator. <laughs> no. Um, so I've been looking, thinking, how else could I use a stencil that looks or could be kind of like a um, bark? And the reason why, I don't want the lines that are dark, I want to be able to put, say, uh, a little thin layer of gel paste on or something so the lines are still there underneath. So I have this uh, branch stencil, and this is probably the closest I could find that might work because it's not necessarily the whole thing has to be the same. It's kind of in patches. You can see that. See that's how it's patched. Now there's not a whole lot in here, so I could probably get away with uh, maybe a uh, let's see, crackle one. So I do have this one. This is an old one. This is a crafter's workshop, I believe. Let's see if I can find a thing. Yeah, TCW234, if you're interested in this one. 
and there are some bigger sections so that could work I could could so I'm just toying with that idea if I want to put paste and you can always um, put a bit on in the end I wouldn't put it on right now because you're gonna it takes a long time for it to dry so put it on after so I thought we could at least start our little furry guys here so we're going to need uh, buff sienna a little bit of uh, blue and umber dark umber color black so a buff color or cream let's see what we got here let's get that one that one umber Okay, that black. Black green. Do I have black? I may have to use gesso. Lamp black. Well, that might work. Haynes Gray would work too. If you don't have black. Okay, so I just picked out a few. I may not use them all. So there's soft black um, or lamp black would work. This is almost empty. And then there's Payne's Gray, uh, Dark Burnt Umber. Is, this is probably one of the most used colors when it comes to birds and animals' fur. This is the closest you'll get to that brown color that's in their fur. Um, and also Light Cinnamon or uh, Raw Sienna. And this is Buttercream. And this one's um, antique flesh. So it's kind of a light, a little more on the mm, orangey side of uh, buff. And I have my coffee lids or whatever you're going to use ready here for me. Um, and when I'm painting, I'm looking at how the fur is overlapping each other. So there's real sections here of these little guys. And you can see the fur, how it overlaps. So you may want to do the um, back and work your way up towards the nose just so that you can put those overlaps on top of each other instead of starting with the white and then you know you get covering it and it doesn't look right so it's easier to start back here and work your way to the nose so we're going to use small brushes because this is a fairly small um, let's see what I got here And I have a Velvet Touch. This is called a Filbert Grainer. And it's got a um, tapered edge to it. Yeah. So it's great for fur. Or you can also use, um, if you have a fairly stiff uh, fan brush, that would work too. Maybe not a long one, though maybe a little bit shorter. Uh, this is a, it doesn't say, 
this is a royal brush and it's also got it's kind of a rake that would work too um, To get that fur look, though, it's usually best to use a stiff brush if you're not, um, if you don't have a rake kind of brush or a grainer, what they say. Um, you can get different types. There's one. This is a well-used one. I like it because it is splayed. See, it's n there's no fine chisel edge to that one, but that makes really good um, hairs when it's like that. So we'll keep those out. So we'll start off with the umber, so dark umber and some black. Oh yeah, I was going to take some blue out too. The blue is for the shine. Um, black fur or a dark brown fur usually has a bit of a shine. Hey Kim. Um, Some of that. I'm going to get a little bit of black in case we need it. And do we need Payne's Gray? Hmm. I'm going to leave the Payne's Gray. That's black. A little bit of Sienna, I think. And um, buttercream, which will be great for the highlight areas. And this fleshy color. Now I could use just the sienna too. Um, yeah, let's just use the sienna. We'll just lighten it with the buttercream. Let me think, is there any other colors that we'll be needing? I don't think so. So we're going to put that right there. Let's see. We'll start off with these two guys right here. First, is that good enough for you? Is it close enough? Is it bright enough? It's hard for me to tell because it's such a small, let's see, exposure. That good. There, that's a little better. Okay, um, by the way, I got my COVID boost yesterday and the other, not bad though. Oh, that's good, it's not affecting you. A lot of people are getting sick with that. All right, well, I guess I better get even a smaller, this is a quarter inch, even if you can get a smaller a lot of times I get the detail brushes because they're even smaller. Because there are times where you really need a tiny, tiny brush. Let's see. Mm. Do I have? Oh, there's one. There's just a, this is a Filbert. I think it's a, a number two. Just in case we need something smaller. Right, so we're going to start from the back. Now I'm going to start actually with this inside of the ears. Um, so see there, see how the uh, light colored is wisping over the black? So these are the things you look for just to make 
your whole process of painting easier. <laughs> um, so it's fairly dark in the center and then it lightens as it goes out. So we can take, uh, let's take the filbert one, grainer, and always have a paper towel. You don't want your paint too wet. So I'm just going to use that nice dark black color. And it's just in the inside of the ears here. So I'm just going to go right over top of this painting. Don't rush, just have uh, fun with it. And this one. This one, I think, could go over a little bit more. Your, my senior age teens made it to Barbados. Is that your kids, Jilly? Or students? And his ear over here hasn't got as much. So really look at your reference. And then a bit in here. I'm just going to go out a little bit, and then when I use the lighter color, I'll go over top of that. And his other ear is fairly dark, so it goes about there. And actually put that bigger um, yes it's it good first No, Kathy, my dad, and, oh, oh, <laughs> I keep forgetting they're, they're like kids. <laughs> Barbados. My um, brother's got a house in the Barbados. Never been, because COVID struck. But beautiful area. Now I can, um, I think I'll actually go in with more of this black, just on the top part of the head. Now I can brush it this way as I'm going past that line, just slightly. I'm going to have a bit of fur, fur over the edge. And then I can just work it in here and down the ear right here. And if it's kind of patchy, that's fine because I'm going to put more layers on here. So 
can uh, actually come down his nose. And this part. Like that. And just looking to see how the overlaps are going. So that I'm going to put brown on top of this color, I think. So I'm just going to go around. It's not really furry on his nose because their hairs are shorter there. And it does go around their eye a little bit, but not hairy. And down here, actually, I probably could use the other. Hey, Joan! Gonna use this small one going around the eyes just so that I don't get too much in there. And around here. Just follow the lines in the pattern that I gave you. You'll know. Just look on your reference and you'll tell where all the black marks are supposed to be. Just around the eye. Kind of in here. I'm going to go past this because you'll see some of the black on the uh, through the lighter areas of the fur. This is more just a base coat, so you can see where it, all the colors go. So this is still the just black, soft black I think it's called. But you can use whatever black you have. I don't think it makes too much of a difference. And I'm going to do his nose. There's no fur around like going over top or anything so I can just put that in. So just base coat. I can just color the whole thing in. I'm not going to worry about where the nostrils all are. I'll put those in later. But the majority of this is black. So that. And this little guy's nose. I've seen some of the um, draw or paintings that you guys have done of the fox. You guys are doing great. It was awesome to see them. I'm glad you're painting along. Kathy, looking good. You're adorable, my Dad had one as a pet when he was little. He used to ride on the dog's back. <laughs> yeah, I see, I've seen a picture of that where they, they're either on the dog's back or 
horse or... <laughs> So I haven't dipped my brush in the water. I'm just using straight paint. So it's nice and thick and I don't have to put a second coat on. Gonna be a little bit of fur going over the edge here of the white from the other guy. So I'm just gonna put a bit of this black just into that fur of the other of the other one, so it looks more natural when I put the white over top or not white but cream. Um, a little head here. Funny, some have different markings than others. Uh, this one doesn't have the black going down to the nose, so these are the things you want to pay attention to. Actually, well, I'll do that later. I'm going to leave a little line there so I can see where the nose and the other guy's head start. Do you guys want me to um, zoom in a little closer, or do you want to see my palette too? Not sure if it's okay then. Don't see anybody complaining. Alright, and then this around the eyes. Chad hasn't moved in a while. Just want to make sure. Okay. I'm not worried about having a straight line 
on certain areas because the fur is overlapping into the other color. So you don't have to worry about your strokes too much there. This one has Um, this is a nice view because we can see reference photo and okay, good. Thank you, Devin. I'll try to keep my hand out of the way too. <laughs> Thanks, Joe. So what has everybody, everybody, everyone, I can't speak today, been up to today, today or this week? What are you working on? trying to find some things to do. I'm always researching. But I do like that. I do like that part of art is research. Um, I'm reconstructing my Jean De Davenport figures book. Oh, cool. So what are you doing? Different faces or... I want to do some more faces too. I thought about maybe doing some videos on how to do character faces. If you're interested in that type of thing or some people don't like doing faces. Let's see, is that good? I think so. Okay, that's all I'm going to do for black right now. Learn how to type on <laughs> I'm just playing every day in my journals. Scavenger and book sewing. <laughs> that's what you should be doing. Just play. That's how you found, find out real cool things of experimenting and if you just play. Pretend you're a kid again and nothing matters and everything you do is joyful and fantastic 
there's no wrong. It's just being with into your um, zone where it's just you and you know you kind of shut the world out. That's what I like. Don't look at it. Anything you do as a fail, either. Everything is a learning experience. Everything is a new thing that you found out what to do or what not to do. So it's not a fail. That's how you progress in your um, art. Yeah, Devin, it's nice. <laughs> it is nice. Oh, I forgot to do the eyes, but... Uh, I think I'm going to wait for the eyes. Okay, so th with this brush, I'm going to put a little bit of the umber, that dark umber color. Let's see how much it shows on top of this here. No, it's not going to show enough. So I want to mix a little bit of that, what was it, buttermilk with it. So it's a little lighter because there's light areas, let's see, in the fur. So I'm going to make a little bit more of this up. I want to make it just a few shades lighter than that. Okay, I'm going to wipe my brush off. I don't want to put it in the water again. And then just put some of that brown over top of the black areas. And this is when you start looking at the way your uh, fur is running. So how's it laying? He has quite a bit on his nose here too. It's more or less dry brushing bits. Just light pressure if you're using one of these um, brushes. Don't need to press down hard with them. The lighter you can do it, the better, because then it j leaves more hairy marks. And a little bit more goes a little bit lighter as it gets to the nose on this particular one. Kind of just goes down the side and then just slightly goes up. And then he has some marks in his fur that are white here and there, too. So just throw some of those in. Oop, that one's too dark. You can always go back over with some more color if you don't like all those marks, like I can go back in there and take some of that dark color again. Go back over, it's back and forth, back and forth. Maybe a little black. Just mix it up.
little more. And I'm not um, cleaning my brush in between. Some here. There. And then just a few light marks in here. Not a lot, just a few. And then I'm going to take some sienna and put a few in around his nose here. He has kind of a sienna on top of his nose a little bit. A little touch of water. Okay, and this guy here, he's more of a, just above his, his um, nose, is more cream color with a bit of red in it. And it just goes up his nose a little bit. This guy, he has a little bit in here. More brownish though, not quite as red. It's just a little lighter on his own. It's just a snout, I guess. his eye a little bit. Maybe a little bit on this one too. It's kind of patchy looking. Okay. Now the buttercream actually color is the perfect color. I don't have to add anything to it. So now we can take that and Fill in the main area. And then you can flick it up into that other painted area because he's furry. And then just a few strands going down here and out here. 
and his nose is pretty much, it's fairly, um, it's not furry. It's short hairs around his nose, so you're not going to see all the different color combinations overlapping each other. So I can just take my color here, just do around his muzzle. It's a little furry on his chin, but around his nose it's pretty smooth looking. And I guess I can do all these guys that way. Get those done. So not worrying about any fuzziness. Gets a little bl a blue tinge around the bottom part, but we'll do that later. Just a little bit more. I'm just going to paint around the bot, very bottom here where his fur is. It is a little bit on that creamy color. Let's see who else has that. Tops of his ears are cream. And they're not, well, they got a little bit of fur, but I'm just going to go over the line that's there from the tracing. Does it go around? Yep. Yeah. And just put that line in with paint. Wow, the dogs are being really good today. I don't hear them at all. Happy are looking good. <laughs> Thanks, Jilly. Hey, Carol. Oh, missed an ear. Okay. 
So I'll get my grainer back out. More of that white. And now I can do uh, some of the ear and the rest of the eyebrows. So just flicking, making sure I'm paying attention to the direction of the fur. He's got some really crazy fur there. Gets close to the eye also. So. Short little wisps in there. Overlaps quite a bit into the eye of the other eye. And fur and his ears are kind of furry. Now I'm not going to do the furriness around his ears in this here because it, this area inside the hollow has to be painted. So I can paint over that again later. Um, because it's going to be a darker color. I'll have to do that cheek too later. And there's a little bit of mm, a little different color in, in the very ends of the lighter color fur. Oop, that's supposed to be black. Like kind of a yellow tinge to it. Uh, you can put those in later. Put some of this black in. We forgot. Right here. bit of that brown in his cheeks. Oh, not 
sure I think of. Maybe a little bit of red. And just combing that into the white area a little bit. Bring some more black in if you put too much brown on. ears. sweeping it into that black area and a little bit on the edge here not much but there I see the line from my tracing there it's actually a little bit more on the brown side right in right in the center here of the ear goes down into black. Same with here. brush again. And just gonna do a little bit of brown going the other way. Here and there. Back to the cream color again. And let's do this guy here. So he's got fluffy eyebrows.
You just have to kind of play with your grain or brush to get the right consistency of paint versus water. And so you don't want a big um, plop of... You can always go back but and paint over it again, but it's nice to find that magical mix. Sometimes you have to clean your brush out because the, the um, paint on your brush starts to dry a little bit and it stops it from um, going off your brush properly. There. Better. has fuzzy ears. That and we'll put a few more in there. And this ear has some in the face. Just not a lot, but it starts to cross over into the other little guy. You can make him as furry as you want to. Some in his in, down below his muzzle, it's a little bit fuzzy. Fuzzy in here. That I have to do first. Let's see what else. And I can put a little bit more of this in the nose so it's not abruptly stopping and seeing the other color. Same with this one. Well, that one's not too bad, but we'll put a little bit. dots just so that you can see where it ends and begins and some more brown in here just short little marks because it's short hair is there Now I can take some of that brown and flick this up into the other guy just a bit. Let's see, get some black in there. Make it fuzzy. And 
bit of they're great um, this is the Princeton velvet touch I them in different widths too um, now I'm gonna take some oh, I said blue almost a purpley blue color let's see Periwinkle blue. Just a smidge. I'm going to put it on my other plate so I don't contaminate it. First, I'm going to do the eyes. And the eyes, I'm just going to do them black first, soft black. And if I can leave that outline a little bit, that would be great. We'll see if I can, it's kind of small in there, but probably should use an even smaller brush. Maybe. Let's see. Because they have this, the eyelid is a little bit lighter. So if you can keep a little ring around, that would be great. But if you can't, you can always um, put it in and, with pencil or Posca or whatever. Get the right amount of paint and water on your brush. holding my breath. <laughs> Not bad. And then you put a little bit of that lighter brown color around the edge just a bit one side and then we can take that periwinkle blue and make our highlights and the highlights are kind of they're not 
just a line, They're kind of speckled. Just speckle. Just uh, look at where, which side it is on the dominant part. Hopefully this will be enough. Some of this is kind of watered down. But you don't need a lot. And then he also has, right on the kind of three, a third of the way down his nose. Um, actually, should I do his nose a little bit? I think I'm going to put some um, brown on his nose. So that brown mix you, ma you made for his uh, fur over top of the black. Just put a swipe of that across the top of his nose. And then, I wonder if I didn't mix that enough. Seems kind of watery. That's better. And then do the same thing. As you can take some of that periwinkle blue. Let's dry that first. I don't want it mixing. So you want to put where you put that brown mark on the his nose on the top here with the over the black. You want to put a little bit of this periwinkle blue on there. Just a small dab and then you could actually wet it so it bleeds out a little bit. Some have different marks. So I don't think there's really uh, a right or wrong way of doing this, but you do what you feel looks best. Like that. And then down the sides of the nostrils, well all of them there is a, a line with that highlight so and it starts up here and then curves this, this is going to be tricky I don't think this brush is small enough let's see I might need a smaller brush yet. Let's see what I got. Uh, 
midgen one. There's one. Very, very small. This is uh, 3 0. So it's small. easier to do these. Kind of. Goes like that. And I'm going to take a little bit of water and I, right down the center between there, add some water. And then I'm going to take some of that and add it to the water so it's not too, um, I don't want it really bright, I just want it more of a glaze. Just slight. And let's see a little bit of that black again. And let's see, just might have to white out some of the of the area a little bit. I want a really dark center though in the nostril. So more on the top part of the nostril. Don't do the whole nostril, because then it'll look funny. Just the top. If you have Posca or something, you could do that. Use those. a little slit dividing the nose you know how the dog's noses are here I'll show you their noses Mike's own. <laughs> see. Then we want a little bit of a brighter mark. And I can use some of this um, cream color. And just one area of the eye. Just put a. Hmm, don't even want. I just want it very slight. Just to give one section a little bit more brightness. Like that. Okay, and then I'm going to take that tiny brush and some of the edge of the eye needs to be fixed a little bit. If I'm looking at my re, um, just 
looking at my picture. more brown on there on the bottom here and there and Take a look at your reference and you'll see what you have to put in as far as the um, eyelid, how the eyelid goes. actually right. is it so far now he has little Got little mouths, which is kind of mm, kind of brownish color. I'm gonna more do more of a glaze than um, thick color. So this guy. Yeah, this has the mustache. And dark. Right in here. That's actually. Yeah, right there. Just stab. More or less like that. Okay, and then that Stay on the Grish side. Almost goes into blue too. But put 
this in first. To dab. A little darker towards his nose. So it's kind of a watered down. I'll put a little more in here. Kind of a mm, darker color in the underneath, and that's because it's shadowed. And there's actually kind of a bluish tinge to that that goes into his snout here. So I just add a little bit of that periwinkle blue into his snout area down below. Same with this guy. A little bit on the blue side there. Not so much there, but I can put some down below just to give that a little bit of shadow effect. And this guy also has a little bit on here. I'm going to put just a bit under his nose. A little more there. And a little bit more watered down black again. Here, a little more darkness. Just using very small amounts of paint and water. Fairly a little bit more shadow under this guy here, I think. And this guy definitely has more shadow. And right underneath it's dark from the shadow of the body of them. Put some more in there too. Okay. And that guy you don't see his fate, his uh, little nose, so. Okay, now with the background here, I'll just do the inside, the hole here. Um, I'm going to do it a little darker than what's there. And I think I'm going to do it in a mix of hmm, umber here, dark umber, and a mix of sienna with. I'm going to mix it up though but I'm going to keep it in one direction because of the um, the way the inside of the tree is going this way so just keep that in mind 
So first of all, I think I'm going to do the this part. So it's fairly dark. And then I'll lighten it a little bit as I go around the few strokes on the edge here and then keeping in mind the shape and the direction of the wood grain um, and then I'm going to mix some raw sienna with that maybe a little bit of Just mix it up on your brush and put it down while it's wet. Play with it. You want it um, grainy looking, streaky. So don't be scared of, of mixing on your plate or page or whatever you're doing it on. Now I'm going to take some more white or the cream. No more red. You want to kind of um, either have it, well, I guess it has to be light or darker because of the, um, the ears. You want to show some of this um, ear fluff, so you don't want it too light. Where the head is, I'm going to lighten it a little bit. And maybe in here. Okay, now I'm going to dry it.
All right. Now, <laughs> I think I want to take a flat. Uh, let's see, or should I do some stippling? Maybe stippling. So I want to, this part here, it's got to look like it's curved. It just doesn't, it's flat looking right now. So you want to give it some dimension. So in order to do that, we want to take, um, if we're going to use the same color for this here, or do we want to change the color of this by putting a glaze on it? So uh, let's see, what do we want to do? If we take a little bit of sienna, actually I could make this into thinking, I hear my brain rattling. <laughs> think it's kind of sienna color I'm looking at the reference photo I know that's not the same color as as my um, paper but let's try just adding a little bit of a glaze over top here I'm just putting um, paint on one corner of my paintbrush. So I want it to kind of look like it's turning into, into the tree a bit. That there's some, um, if you see that, see how it's kind of turning into the tree here? That's kind of what I want to do. So, in order to do that, I have to take some of this um, brown, my stipple brush, and I'm going to stipple some edges here, just a little bit more. Body looking. Just so that it's kind of looks more kind of bringing the two together, I guess you could say. Um, and then here, I think I'll put a little bit in here too, just along the edge. Now I'm going to change some of this. I might put some snow on the edge here. Okay.
Now, let's see. What else do I want to do? Now, you could go really crazy and do all kinds of <laughs> stuff. Um, I'm just going to put a little bit more of that color right along here. Right along here. Just to give it a little bit of color. Maybe even some darker. Right in here. So I'm using that umber color. Be shadowed a little more. the hollow of the tree so it's gonna have some areas that are a little darker follow some of the lines in here. Just changing it up a little bit, make it a little more earthy, I guess. Okay, and I think I'm gonna take, darken some of this area in here. Maybe I'll just do that with this here, make another glaze. Just in here, it needs to be a little bit darker. You can still see it, but just need it a little bit darker. Then I can put those um, tufts of uh, puffs of hair in here. Let's see, maybe in there a little bit. some sections actually let's put a little bit more
thinking. Needs a real dark, I think, right in here. that dry. And dry. Thanks, Joan. Okay, so now we can take a little bit of... Actually, black or even the... Well, let's put some black on here to make some tufts up here. Paint is wearing, it's starting to dry. A little bit more difficult to use. Like that. it in there a little bit. And just looking on my reference. Here, here. I think I need some more out here. in there. And this guy. Somewhere there. Darker in here. 
darker in there. little whisker dimples to put them in I just touch Let's do the tufts, little tufts of, of uh, cream color coming over to his ears on that darker area now. We can do that. There's not much, but there's a little bit. Not enough water on my brush. You in here. You on here. I'm going to put a few over this. It's good to overlap some stuff. on there and now I'm going to take a little bit of blue, that blue again and do the final touch of highlights on his fur so just too watery.
just a few. So it doesn't have to be a lot. I'm just lightly just putting a few streaks. On his head up here. Right in here. Uh, let's see. I think that's good enough. Have a good night. So far. <laughs> so I could leave it like that, or I could put snow on there too. So if I'm going to do snow, you want to use a white. I guess I could use gesso. We could just put a dusting of snow on, I think. So I'm just going to use my Deerfoot stippler and Right here, you see how it's darker here? So it looks like it's raised slightly. So I'm just gonna go right around here. Pick it up some of, of the areas because it would be collecting. And then maybe, let's see, some of these areas here. Maybe they had a storm. I just had a dusting. If you don't like it, just wipe it off before it dries. There. Then I can take some of that blue that we used and just put a little bit of that blue here and there, and it'll show up as shadow. More on the bottom part.
dry it. Thanks, Shelly. Thanks, Shelly. Now, if you see, Here, how there's some reddish tones in there. You can also um, color the white areas just slightly um, with a bit of let's see. Mm, you could do a little gray, although I do have that there. A little bit on the where did I put that? Oh, there it is. If I want to make just kind of a, a light wash, I can just put some of that oop, too dark on the Some areas that just needs a little bit more. Let's see, I'm getting mixed up. That's the wrong one. Color difference. It's just a, a glaze, basically. And it just um, helps you with the, uh, gives it more 3D look. There. See how you just change, put a little bit of in the ears. It kind of separates certain areas, gives a little more depth in your um, yeah. Um, probably need a little bit more white in there. drying. Get the more sparkle.
done. I think it turned out pretty good. So look through your scrapbook paper. You never know what you're going to find there. Play with it. And uh, take pictures of, of uh, bark from trees and study it. Look at how you get your shadows. Which way is the bark running? That type of thing. And just um, experiment with your scrapbook papers because <laughs> it saves you a lot of time and you don't have to do all that work. So I hope you'll give it a try and uh, enjoy the process of creating something and relaxing while you're enjoying the, the uh, journey. And we'll see you on Tuesday. So have a creative weekend, everybody. Stay safe and stay creative. Bye for now.